To say that I receive and review a lot of welding machines is a bit of a gross understatement. Thing is, a lot of machines come here to TFS, but most of them don't even appear on the channel or even on the shelf behind me. Why? Because they're crap. They get sent back. Most of them are of the budget-friendly category, or under $1,000, which means that nah, there's kind of hit and miss on a lot of them, and not many of them survive. I literally just send them right back and say, well, try again next time when you've got something better. So when Prime Weld sent out their TIG 225, I was like, well, hey, let's treat it no different than any other machine. Let's beat the crap out of it. Let's give it to students. Let's let everybody just completely unleash the fury of knowing and not knowing how to weld on this machine and see how well it survives. Well, guess what? It made it with flying colors, and even with the stats list that it has and what it includes is really impressive. So I really had to dig deep and to find something on this machine that I am not really cool with and the things that I do like. So here it is, everything you need to know about the Prime Weld TIG 225. It's usually the details in a machine that I like to go hunting for. It's the little things. Most of the time you open up a machine that's of the budget friendly variety and you find, you know, pretty standard things, you know, standard stinger, pretty typical ground clamp. There's some details in that one. Consumables, things that it comes with, you know, the standard argon flow meter, which is pretty much everybody has one of those and all the rest of that good stuff. But the first thing that you usually find where manufacturers start cutting costs is in the packaging. So when I opened up the box initially, I was like, wait a minute, Something's not right here. Let's check this out. Now on the outside, I mean, it just looks like any old plain old box, except it's, uh, you know, you shake it around and stuff like that, and you don't hear anything moving. And I'm like, hmm, that was pretty interesting. Must be uh, packed pretty well with some extra bubble wrap. Then you pop the top off of it, start pulling out the other boxes with all the accessories and the machine and all the rest of that stuff. You say, wow, they actually had no space whatsoever inside of there. Tightly packed. That's pretty impressive. And then you get even further into this one. You start taking the machine apart. Now, most manufacturers use the clamshell, but most of them just put it on the top, maybe on the bottom, some on the corners, and just pack the rest with some styrofoam. This, on the other hand, was completely packed within that clamshell. That's actually, that's pretty unique. I actually see that only in expensive machines, but even better still, as you look down into the box and see these metal corners, which means it's a little bit more crush proof and drop proof, and that protects it really well during shipping. Now, this is something I've never ever seen on a machine of this price tag at all. Now, those details really carry on into the rest of the things. I mean, we actually have an owner's manual that's written in English, and it's pretty detailed. It reads kind of like stereo instructions, but nonetheless, even comes a little face mask, a little handheld version. This is awesome for one-handed TIG welding, if you can do it. Then you look at the hose, right? Most of these are just kind of clamped on. This one is crimped. I'm actually kind of surprised to see that one, that uh, you actually have a crimped end on it instead of a uh, clamped end on it, but good solid rubber hose. The flow meter, pretty standard. It's of the uh, billet and cast type uh, that you see in most uh, deals. The Stinger, there's nothing really special about this one. It's rated about 315 amps, I think, on the connector. And then we get the ground lead. Now this, is where you usually see people skimping out on. Now, if we open up the jaw on this one, right on the inside, you'll actually see the braided uh, type that connects it right down in the throat there. Usually it's just a little piece of metal, like a copper deal, and I've seen some bigger companies uh, kind of skimp out on that one, but to see this is a you know, 315 amp rated, pretty good. The pedal, okay, everybody hates this one. Yeah, nothing special there, right? We also have the nice little uh, you know trigger that's uh, not attached to the torch, so if you want it, it's optional. It's a little thing like that, actually. I like having it separate. The consumables for the torch are pretty standard. They're just, you know, they, they're included, everything you need there. But let's talk about that torch. Okay, elephants in the room. Somebody's got to talk about this one. With all of this detail that you see on here, right? A crimped hose instead of a clamped hose. A braided ground earth lead, right? Or the, the details in the packaging and all the rest of that stuff. There is no possible way that that is a real CK Worldwide torch. On a machine with this price tag, that's got to be a fake. And most people would assume that, including myself. So I did what anybody else would do. I called CK Worldwide, sent them some pictures as soon as I got all of it, and I said, can you verify that this is a real CK Worldwide number 17 flex head that is included with this machine? Can you verify that one? They said, it's ours. So that is a real number 17 CK Worldwide flex headed torch that comes with this machine. Not additional, not extra, not optional, none of that stuff. Bone stock, as the machine ships, it includes the CK Worldwide number 17 flex head that has been verified. 
real CK Worldwide. So how could this get any better? They've got to skimp out on something, right? Warranty's got to suck. You got to pay for all this other stuff. Well, actually, no, it states very clearly the warranty is three years on this machine. It includes everything, including the shipping both ways, should you ever have to send it back for servicing, replacement, anything completely covered. Now, to sprinkle in some extra awesomeness, this is something I discovered. It says right here on the manual, seven days a week if you need help please call so seven day a week customer service three-year warranty that includes everything a ck worldwide torch all of these really nice extra details means to only one logical outcome and that is this machine has just got to suck so let's find out step number one let's get all of these connected up here pretty standard connections uh, all the dins 35s uh, you know everything just screws on clips in i would really like to see a quick release on this but not totally a deal breaker but as soon as we turn it on Those fans definitely have some volume to them. Now, they're not the most overbearing fans I've ever heard in my life. They're uh, pretty typical, pretty standard, but, you know, you really can't complain all that much for a machine with this price tag on them. But either way, we need to get the torch switched over. Now, there's nothing wrong with the standard consumables that are included with it. They are not CK Worldwide brand, but at the same time, nothing really wrong with them. I just prefer uh, the stubby consumables. So I'm going to throw in a CK Worldwide stubby kit with gas lens on it and uh, switch it all over. Now, this this is just a me preference, but uh, you know I weld a lot better with it anyway. So as soon as we get all that switched over, we'll get our machine set up here. Now there's always a part of me that wants to see like some sort of spectacular failure happen with the machine and catch it on camera. But at the same time, you know, if I did capture a spectacular failure, then we wouldn't actually have a machine worth talking about. It would just be like some viral video or whatever. But either way, I want to shoot for the top here. Let's max this thing out. 225 or 4 or whatever amps that it actually goes up to. It's rated at 225, displays 224. But I'm going to bust out some 3 8 thick or uh, 10 millimeter steel on this one. And we're going to do two joints, one right after the other one. I'm going to line them up. I'm going to do a T joint and then follow it up with a lap joint. Now, all of this, I'm just going to floor it and uh, and run with it. Now, it's obviously that's way too much for the torch to, to handle, but it's a CK Worldwide torch, so I'm confident that it will do it. So now it's just pretty much up to the machine. Will the machine handle all of this? So as soon as I smash it to the floor and get welding on it, We'll find out what this can actually do, if it can actually hang, if we get some good welds and all the rest of that stuff. Now, here's the downside. This mini amps actually produces a ridiculously bright arc. And unfortunately, when you look at it behind the camera, it's just totally washed out. One of these days, I'll have some totally awesome, uh, you know, camera equipment that will capture something like this. But... 225 amps is a lot to be shooting behind the camera, but do take my word for it. It absolutely can hang. It, I mean, it, it, it does quite well, actually. I'm, I'm rather surprised. But as soon as I finish off and we get the lap joint all done, this is all pretty smooth, nice and consistent. Let me flip this around here. You can take a look at it. And uh, you know, I mean, this is our lap joint, nice and smooth, pretty consistent. Everything is good. Nice heat signature. There's the T joint. You know, I mean, it's, it's surprisingly ridiculously smooth. It was so smooth that I just decided I'm going to go for it. I'm a little bit rusty on walking the cup or in this case, kind of wiggling the cup, but even running it along this joint, I am actually ridiculously rusty with this. But you know what? I trust the machine enough to say that, uh, you know, if there was an issue and it doesn't come out looking pretty, that it was actually me and I can't blame the machine. So <laughs> that's kind of where I'm running at on this one. So as soon as I get it done, let's flip it around here, take a look. Not too bad, not too great, but not too bad. But again, the machine is smooth enough for me to do this. And uh, that's actually kind of surprising. That's, that's not really expected that the arc is that smooth. So just for some added aesthetic appeal, let me just uh, bust down a tri-weave here. Now, my cylinder of argon was going just a little bit low, so I decided, well, let's just give it all I've got here, and uh, maybe we'll burn it out midway through, but, you know, either way. Threw down a tri-weave on this one. You know, it's... it. Like I said, the arc is smooth enough for me to for me to actually run with this, and we'll uh, we'll get in close here and have a look at it. Not too bad. I'm actually really surprised at, again, how smooth this arc really is.
Now, I'm always going to be welding tubes. In fact, I mean, that's where my the majority of my career has been in welding tubes. So I always have to check out a welder when it comes to welding tubes and how smooth it is. Now, again, let's take a close look here. I'm very unfortunate that I was running low on argon, so I had to suck that tungsten way up into that cup just to make sure that I had, I don't know, semi-sufficient gas coverage. And the weld looks a little bit grainy and not fantastic, but at the same time, time pay kind of close attention there is no fluttering arc on this one i mean it's it's really impressive but when it came down to it it's like okay i i tried to get the rest of this tube all welded up here and it just it started blowing apart i mean there was just flat out no argon so you win some you lose some but either way i'm gonna switch out the cylinder and let's attack some stainless steel now I really enjoy welding stainless steel. It's not my favorite metal by far, but at the same time, it's definitely one of the top contenders. And of course, if anybody's welding with a machine like this, of this price tag and all the rest of that stuff, presumably they're going to be welding stainless steel because it's most likely going to be like in their garage and doing stuff like that. But this machine delivers. It's like it's smooth enough to actually do it. And of course, with running like a standard consumable package like CK Worldwide means you can easily adapt, uh, you know, and, and trust that, you know, know everything's going to work out well so adding the uh, number 12 fupa cup from uh, michael furick uh, is is kind of a, a standard if you will it's something that we all expect now this is something i'm going to call no prep stainless i literally just took it off the shelf no brushing no wipe it down with acetone no nothing just this is exactly what you'd expect the result after a quick run from that machine directly with nothing more than a number 12 cup and voila there you go not bad at all now, while we're here, let's play with some pulse settings. Now, if we flip our pulse to switch to the middle, we're going to reference the outside ring, or as in high pulse. If we flip it all the way to the top, we're going to reference the inside ring on the frequency, which is a low pulse. The low pulse runs from 0.5 to 10 pulses per second, while the high pulse runs from 10 to 200 pulses per second. And that's all adjustable by the pulse frequency knob. Now, I don't usually pulse on the low side. I typically just run anything between, I don't know, 20 to 40 pulses per second second on average and if I'm doing things like chromoly or anything like that it's usually 500 pulses per second and above but either way let's just play with it as it is right now one thing that's really awesome with this machine is we have base current control or at least our off time as to what percentage that current goes down to when it's off pulse and then we have our pulse duty cycle which is our on time or our high point how long it stays on our high point that's not something you normally see in a machine of this price tag they usually kind of cut a couple of those or uh, one of the other functions out of it so let's set this up and let's just see how it does again on some stainless steel about 30 pulses per second roughly about 50 percent or so on time and a base current of down to about uh, 20 30 percent somewhere in there now you can see as i run this one it's pretty responsive does its thing i mean it's to be expected of what pulsers do but let's take a look we got a decent high crown on it. The toes look uh, pretty wetted in. We definitely have some ripples in there. The color could have been a little bit better, but then again, I was welding on a very hot coupon. But what excited me the most, or what really made me appreciate this, is the pulse was extremely quiet. It didn't have that annoying clicking noise that most pulsers do, which, you know, that's one of those little details that I really appreciate. So either way, I don't pulse much, but there's a pretty good example of it. Let's move on. Now, I've probably said this a hundred times, I think it's really hard for a manufacturer to screw up the DC side of the machine, but it is difficult to get it just right. Now, that arc was actually very, very smooth. Now, it's not like four or $5,000 machine plus, you know, smooth, but it certainly wasn't $800 smooth. It was actually very clean and very focused and very refined, and I actually really liked it. Like, I was not expecting an arc that smooth. I was expecting one more, you know, $800 like. So that was a surprise, and I'm actually really pleased to, uh, to see that out of it. It's a, it, was, it was a surprise, it really was. But that's pretty much on DC. We couldn't get it to blow up, uh, you know, maxing it out at 225 amps. Obviously, we couldn't uh, melt the torch down or anything like that, but we were pushing it pretty hard. No problems there. So 
As soon as I got the machine, I immediately flicked it on and went to aluminum because aluminum is totally my jam. That's like my stuff. But I played around with the stuff that I normally play around with, or at least the amperage range and stuff like that that I've set. So just the same as we did on DC here, we tried to blow it up on 225 amps. Let's try to blow it up or at least hit duty cycle or hit cutout or something on aluminum because surely it's got to happen there, right? So I haven't pushed this thing to the max yet or really, really hard. So we're going to find out right now if it's gonna blow up on me or what's gonna happen. So check this out, here's some aluminum work. So we'll flip our AC switch up here so that way we're in AC mode and we have a frequency of 40 to 200 hertz. Now I'm gonna stick it kind of like right in the middle somewhere in there and then our balance, um, this one references the positive side so always turn it down to the uh, 20, 30, 40% or so on. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm going to see if this runs high pulse frequency on aluminum. Most machines don't, but let's give it a shot. I haven't tried it yet. runs high pulse. There's like little tiny ripples in it. Hold on a minute. I'm going to see if I can jack this up even further. Most machines won't do this. 200 hertz. Let's just, let's just find out. I don't know. I have no idea. But it actually runs high pulse. Now it may be a little bit hard to tell here, but uh, it's actually doing 200 pulses per second on AC, which is actually relatively uncommon. Most machines on AC will cut out somewhere in the 20 pulses per second range, but that's pretty impressive. I really wasn't expecting it, and of course, the result on here, it's uh, not bad. It's actually pretty clean. I like it. Now this is something I usually uh, just call my warm-up round. It's nothing more than a series of random welds in patterns just to kind of get me comfortable uh, before I start welding anything. I, I typically just do some weaves, uh, some straight beads, and uh, you know just padding them out. Now this is 80 thousandths or uh, a 2 millimeter aluminum because I want to get ready for an outside corner joint and I just kind of want to get you know into that mode here. So as soon as I feel like I'm warmed up, I'm just going to go head on into it. So tack it all up, outside corner joint, uh, 80 thousandths or two millimeter aluminum. And as soon as I get set up kind of comfy, let's just run this whole thing all the way through from start to finish here. Now again, I'm pretty surprised at the low side of AC on this one. I mean, you can always just blast out a, you know, some aluminum and just floor it, but that low end control is uh, usually what I'm trying to track down and find. And this actually has some pretty decent low end. The only problem is that pedal, uh, you really gotta, you really got to find that sweet spot, and it's, like I said, it's the pedal, not the machine, but outside corner is looking pretty good, so, you know, I'd pretty much call this one a success here. I mean, we uh, we had enough control out of it to not blow it up and obviously not run too cold on it, so got some decent pen out of it. Um, you know, I'm going to call this one a success. That's a pretty decent test right there, so let's move it on to the extreme opposite. 225 amps on some quarter-inch aluminum. We'll do a quick little lap joint on this one now. I don't expect it to go extremely far here because this is going to get really, really hot, really, really quick. So this is pretty much as far as I could go before my hands were pretty much catching on fire. My glove got a little burned up here. My fingers a little bit singed, all for love of welding. So since we didn't have a catastrophe or anything like that, no gigantic failure, explosion, uh, and we didn't even hit thermal uh, cutout or anything like that, uh, let's just see if we can chase this out. I'm just going to go about 160 amps on this piece here, and we're just going to stack one weld right after the other. Now, I have all of this sped up because it's a lot of footage, but it was literally just a uh, let's see what we can do to exceed the duty cycle, see if we can nail it, ping it, whatever. I'm not even sure what it is at this point when I'm welding this right now. It's just, let's just keep on stacking in whatever direction I can and just fill it up until it becomes uh, unbearable again, you know? So, sorry, some of this is in and out of focus, but, uh, you know, you kind of get the idea. Normally, I would cut these scenes apart, but I want to really show you that we're, we're chasing this out one after the other and just continuous welding uh, with a lot of time spent on it. Just see if we can actually, you know, hit the duty cycle or cut it down or whatever. Okay. A little hot, a little hot. Ugh. 
Oh, you know what? Here's the duty cycle. 140 amps, 40 percent. Uh, how long was that? Seven and a half or so? Okay, camera guy's saying we're going about seven and a half minutes or so just welding all of this stuff up. And uh, this says right here, TIG, 40% duty cycle at 140 amps. We're pushing 160 some odd amps, pretty solid through all of this quarter inch <laughs> aluminum, just one right after the other, different styles, different beads, different everything. You guys saw all of that, kind of sped up a little bit, but uh, uh, I mean, seriously, we didn't even hit thermal overload, cut off, didn't give me any fits, had a little issue with the high frequency, the hotter it was getting, um, you know, hey, that might be the torch, that might be the tungsten, that might be the plate, that might be a lot of things, but, you know, I'm not really going to say that that was a humongous issue, it could have even been the pedal, but that pedal is an issue, and that's where we get into our likes and gripes list. Now, it's kind of no secret whatsoever that these pedals absolutely suck. And uh, not many people like them because there's no real uh, control over it. There's no fine control. You have to move the pedal a lot to get a uh, very little amount. And it's not the most comfortable pedal in the world. They tend to slide across the floor and all the rest of that stuff. Now, the solution to controlling it uh, from sliding across the floor is to literally flip it around, put your heel on top of it, and use the ball of your foot or your toes to uh, actually control your amperage. That's the better way of running it. Uh, but I did run this with the, uh, the classic gray pedal that a lot of people know, which means they are are the exact same pedal. They both run the machine. That means that you can grab a hold of an SSC pedal or similar to replace this pedal with on your machine, which should give you a uh, much better control on it. Now, even though SSC doesn't actually list at the moment that this works, uh, it will. It's the same pedal as the other one. So well, another thing that I really gotta bring up here that's really awesome is the uh, complete control over that entire wave, especially on the pulse settings. Now, again, I don't use pulse very much, but at the same time, uh, you know, having that that base current, the time on, the whole range of adjustment on it is really awesome in a machine of this price tag. Not to mention we have pre-flow and post-flow. That's really cool because sometimes you need that little extra poof of argon gas like when you're welding stainless or something like that and it's a really great thing to have before the arc actually starts. So quite literally, I mean for a dual voltage machine, this is 110 and 220, you know, this is solid. Like I definitely would recommend this to somebody and I'm, I'm rather surprised by it. So definitely worth checking out. Now I got a description or a link down in the description there below so you can definitely check out where to get this. Uh, the best place I found is on Amazon so make sure that you uh, check this out. I believe it sells out quite often so uh, it's it's from what I've been tracking for the you know past month or so that I've had this it sells out pretty quick so you might want to get on it when you see it or if it's on sale or anything like that you know if you're considering it I would definitely say this is solid so either way that's going to wrap it up for this episode now I want to thank you guys for watching as always don't forget to subscribe to the fabrication series YouTube channel and make sure you click to you know get post notifications ring that bell send us some love you know <laughs> Either way, if you need to get in contact with us, hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, or Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series. I'm going to get out of here. Got to keep welding, but we'll see you guys on the next episode.